everyone, I'm Amber Oliver. Welcome to my channel. Today's video features our primary closet makeover sponsored by Modular Closets. Let's get started. So our family has actually spent 18 months on two separate continents. We inadvertently were separated by a global pandemic because we were trying to move abroad right when everything sort of hit the fan. So fast forward, we're back in our home and we're trying to turn this into a place we love instead of just a place we have to live since we're not getting our time together abroad at this point. So one of our first projects we wanted to tackle was the primary closet. Now the closet is only I think three foot by eight foot. So you really only have one wall where you've got some hanging space and then in the back. Now the biggest problem was there was a lot of wasted space in there. Most of us when we move into our homes, we've got maybe one shelf and one bar that goes all the way around that you can hang things on. That leaves both on top and bottom a lot of space that you could really fill with other things. So I teamed up with Modular Closets to design a closet that fit this space and really maximized all of our storage. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how we assembled everything from Modular Closet, and I'll talk a bit about the process and how to work with them. So let's get started. My closet had a lot of wasted space above and below the existing rack and shelf. I had a small shelf in the back that always looked super messy. I also needed a space for my longer hanging items. Another thing on my wish list were drawers. I wanted to free up dresser space in our bedroom for my husband. Your first step is to measure your closet and take inventory. This is a great time to declutter and downsize. What's working in this space? What isn't? Make a list of your wants and needs and then head to modularclosets.com. You can use their design software to dream up your own closet or do like I did and use their free design team services. I sent over my info and got back a design space that was maximized down to the inch. When the boxes arrived, it was a little overwhelming, but I quickly saw everything is thoughtfully packed, so the setup was going to be a breeze. I also love that the majority of the packaging was recyclable. This is an addition to being made in the US, so the shipping has a lower carbon footprint. To start assembling, work with one section at a time. I used small bowls to hold all my hardware and laid all the pieces out before we started. You'll mainly be using three pieces of hardware. The long screws, those are for installing them on the wall, cam locks, and cam posts. All you need for assembly is a Phillips head screwdriver and the instructions. Use a Phillips screwdriver to attach the cam post in the correct location on the side panels. Then add in the rear cleat and the set shelf. After assembled, use the screwdriver to install the cam locks. Each module is assembled in this same basic way. I couldn't believe how easy these were to install, even with tiny humans or furry friends running around demanding your attention. This part of the project you can totally DIY, but when it's time to hang these babies on the wall, you're definitely going to need a second set of hands, maybe even two. The most difficult part of the process was probably assembling the drawers, but even that was pretty simple. They're just rectangles with the bottom that you add the finished front to. The most important thing is to pay attention to the instructions on which type of screws to use and where to put them. After they're assembled, add on the drawer hardware to both the shelf and the drawers, then add the holes for your drawer pulls. Once everything was built, we were ready to get into the actual space. We started by removing everything. Our dining room became my pseudo closet for the weekend. Taking everything out actually feels really good and it's great to start with a clean slate. Make sure you are intentional though about everything you're putting back into the space. I easily took down the old hardware and filled in all the holes left behind. 
I wanted to add some color and personality to my space, so we covered the floor and got to painting. I wanted to try a two-color look with a dark pink on the ceiling and a lighter pink on the walls. I knew this would make my white closet modules really pop. We measured down 12 inches and taped off for the ceiling color. The modules would be mounted at this height, so this line would come in really handy later. For the ceiling, I used Coral Essence by Benjamin Moore. With all the money you've saved on your custom closet, go ahead and splurge on the good paint. It really does make a difference. We did two coats on the ceiling and finished all the module assembly and ceiling painting in one day. We waited overnight before moving to the next section and also we used delicate tape on the freshly painted ceiling section. This lighter pink took three coats to get full coverage, but the color turned out exactly how I wanted. The delicate tape from Frog Tape worked wonderfully and it didn't pull off any of the freshly painted section. Now comes the real fun, time to install your modules. I use a magnetic stud finder, I'll link it for you below, and the painter's tape to mark where the studs are. After they're marked, measure and make pilot holes on the modules. This will help you tremendously when your partner is holding up these big pieces on the wall and you're trying to get it level and drill into the studs at the same time. Instead of a corner unit that actually can block off some of your usable space, we were able to maximize every inch by utilizing the corner bridge shelf. We cut the piece to the desired size and installed it to connect the back wall unit to the side wall units. So we were able to have a nice cohesive look and we could use that space on top for storage. The four drawer shelf closet tower was a bit of a beast to lift and level, but having the legs under really helped. They aren't full weight bearing, but they help get you into the space where it needs to be. Since we'd already assembled the drawers, all we had to do was slide those in place. The last two sections went up super easy as they were the smallest modules we had. With the space fully built out, I couldn't wait to start filling it. The double hanging section in the back alone was the same size as the entire hanging section I previously had on the long wall. But once I started filling in the modules, the ones closer to the door especially started feeling a little bit cramped. That was something I hated about the space previously. In order to allow more space to move around, I actually moved the hanging rod in from the standard location. With the hanger in place, I saw that there was about four inches in the back, so the rod could actually move in a bit. This made a big difference. It didn't feel nearly as crowded in there and I could get in and move easily. This little change made the biggest difference on the tall hanging section closest to the door. As I said, we used every inch of this closet, which meant that last section was really close to the door. By moving the rod in just a couple of inches, it made the doorway feel less crowded. I hope this project inspires you to try modular closets and update and maximize the space in your closet. I'll see you in my next video.